Welcome to Zakai Java and Bluedy Studio tutorial. In this tutorial, I will show you how to create a professional looking array using the latest version of the application. If you are using Bluedy Studio MX, MX Pro, or USD versions, be sure to switch the target to the internal multiplexer. Let's change some options. I prefer to store the key store used by the JAR signing process in the application folder. Expand switches will show a complete list of switch commands instead of the switch keyword. I recommend enabling the auto size if you have enabled the expand switches. I changed show hints to for non fit items to make hints less annoying. Use internal buffer for copy paste means do not use clipboard. Using the clipboard allows you to copy actions and animations between applications. The source code beautifier allows you to format the source code of the scripts if you use it. Extended icons in the object list allows you to see the type of the object in the object list. Show enter action in the button hint is also useful. I prefer the new neon scheme as it less annoying and the modern VS 2012 style. Using the target dock, move the tabs up, replacing the title bar of the main window and saving some space in the UI. Open SSL help us verify the validity of the JAR signing process. Therefore, I recommend enabling verification and specifying the Open SSL executable. The X264 encoder allows encoding background images in a video. If you want to use Bluetooth Studio with TSMaxer, you must specify TSMaxer executable here. Now let's bring some beauty. And now let's set up the default project settings. First of all, I recommend changing the default organization IDs in the signature settings. You can check help on how to set up the correct IDs. I just replace the last values to zero. Here I recommend to enable render text to image and render rectangles to image to avoid player's compatibility issues. And turn on the run index generator minimized to make it less annoying. And let's save these settings as default settings for all future projects. Now let's change the settings for the current project. We will use two audio tracks in the main movie for this project. I recommend specifying the number of audio tracks in the menu the same and enable switch audio tracks in the menu. Auto truncating AC3 is recommended for Bluetooth Studio but not for Kai Java. Avoid the black screen with add additional play mark between the last two play items of the menu playlist and add a jump chapter command on it. Let's save our new project. Now let's create our new movie and the main menu. Now I create a background panel. I'm not a designer, so instead of Photoshop, I will use rectangles and text. In most professional Blu-rays, you will use import from PSD. Now I copy the saved value to make the process a little faster. I use double click to specify exact values. Let's align it vertically in the center of the screen and rename this item. Now I need fonts. I downloaded a couple of them from Google Fonts. OK, let's create our buttons.
Synchronize text means that the text of other states will be the same. I copy the color of the text as usual. Let's move it to the center. I use Ctrl plus C to duplicate the button. Right click and select Change Object States to change the text of all states at once. Let's align our buttons. Now I want to rename the buttons and sort. Sorting is required for the carousel generator, which I will use. It uses the button order to place the buttons. At the moment we do not see how our menu will look above the background video. Thus I open the scene editor using double click and create a background image for the menu. The first time you open any video, an index is created. I use Alt plus right and Alt plus left to find the pictures that I like. Ctrl plus S to save the image as PNG. Now I select the image as the background for the designer. This background is used for the designer window and the simulation but will not be added to the final menu on the disk. Now you can see that our text looks bad on a semi-transparent background panel. I copy the background panel and make additional backgrounds for the buttons. Move it below all the buttons and rename it. Remove the transparency. Make the frame thinner. Zoom it to 100% with the mouse scroll wheel. Let's use 20 pixels around the text. Now I copy it and use for another button. Move and adjust the size. and rename. And now I link these static objects with the normal state of the buttons. This makes these objects part of the normal state of the buttons. Thus, the carousel generator will move it with the normal state when arranging the buttons. Now let's create a carousel menu from the main menu. The left offset of the background panel is 160 pixels, but there is a frame of 5 pixels, so we need to add these 5 pixels. Otherwise, the animation will overlap the frame. 
The additional background that we made for our buttons extends beyond the buttons by 20 pixels at the left and right. So I enter 25 here to avoid animation artifact. The selected button will be in the center. And let's specify a twin animation effect. Now you can see three menus. Each contains one button. Let's assign the first of this menu to the first play and look at the simulation. Let's assign a play movie action to the play button and specify the fade out animation. Remember to include the selected state into animation. Now I copy the animation to the end animation and replace fade out with fade in. Double click the first play and specify to use the third end animation. And now let's create the option menu. I will clone my main options as a static menu, replacing the button with a static object. These off screen objects were created by the carousel generator. I delete them and remove these objects from the first animation group using Ctrl plus Shift plus R. Let's change the color of the option static object to highlight the fact that we are inside the options menu. Now let's increase the height of the background panel and move it up. Let's add buttons to switch our audio streams. Let's make them smaller. Now I want to set the current state. It will be a rectangle. I disable the move wall button mode to move only the current state. I move it with the arrow keys. Let's make a copy of this button. I use auto assign transitions to assign transitions between these two buttons. Now I use Ctrl plus Shift plus 1 to add these buttons into the first animation group. And Ctrl plus Shift plus 2 to add this background panel into the second animation group. Let's rename the buttons. You can see the end animations copied from the main options menu. We must remove them. Now let's add the end animation for the options menu. The height of the background panel in the main menu is 150 pixels. This is 60% of 
from the 250 pixels, which is the height of the panel in the Options menu. Therefore, we will scale the background panel from 60 to 100%. But we need to animate two things in parallel. So, let's make our animation advanced. I added the first animation to the list. Now, I need to slide the audio buttons from bottom to top. The difference between the background panel in the main menu and the options menu is 100 pixels. Thus, our buttons should slide 100 pixels. We should include the selected and current states in the animation. And we need to limit the visible part of the animation at the bottom, so that the buttons in the animation will be shown starting from 778 pixels only. Now let's copy the animation into press down actions of the buttons. We should return the main menu by pressing down. But the animation should be the opposite. Let's assign the audio stream selection actions. As you can see, the highlight for the current state is assigned automatically. Now I want to replace the simple jump menu command with switch. If the first audio track is selected, jump to the first button. An empty custom command means otherwise. Please note the switch should be explicit. Let's save and verify. Sometimes you can see artifacts when using background image in the simulation. Don't worry, this is a simulation engine limitation. Now I need to create a template menu that will be used for the scene carousel generator. I clear the animation groups and delete unused items generated by the carousel generator. and copy the color. Let's move on to the scene generator. First of all, I input the chapters. And make sure that all the chapters are placed in the right place. I add the chapter at the end, but remove it from the generation process. We'll use the same colors and sizes.
I forgot to generate chapter images. We can generate them automatically during the carousel generation process, but I prefer to check them and fix if necessary. So, let's save our preset. I also need to know the top position of the background panel to customize the animation. I need to slide from the top of the original background panel. Thus, I use the difference between the top of the main background panel and the top of the scene's background panel. Now, I want to copy this animation. So, I use the hack. Add it to advanced animation and copy. Pass to the advanced, double click and check the advanced. This animation should be the opposite. Also, I have chapter names, and I will use them for the current chapter. We have already created chapter images, so let's uncheck this flag. The application notices that there are no resized images. So, it will generate them. Everything looks good. Let's test it. Now, let's look in the lock window. It has errors due to the lack of the video streams in the menu. Let's add video and audio. Now, I want to copy the first play action to the top menu action. I recommend creating an intro to prevent the main menu from appearing before the video. I will use the menu streams and specify the intro in the main menu properties. Now we need to specify the play mark at which the menu appears. Don't forget to specify the end action for the movie. And now you can see there are no more warnings.
Let's add a pop-up menu to our movie. First of all, I clone the main menu. Change play to the main. Adjust the size. And create a carousel in the same way. Add a return action. Copy the fade out animation. And the fade in too. Now let's assign a pop up action for the movie. Don't forget to specify the end animation. Use F5 to open a pop up menu. Let's clone the main options to the options. Remove unused items. Clear the animation groups. Copy the color. Resize the background panel. Now let's copy the audio buttons to the pop up. Add the background to the second animation group. Assign the return action. Copy the end animation. Now let's create the scenes menu template. Remove unused enter animations and unused items. Clear the animation groups. Copy the color. And move on to the scene menu carousel generator. I will use the auto save it preset. Everything looks good. Save the project. Let's assign switch to jump from the main menu to the options.
well done.